Now let's talk about another principle called the multiplication principle. Basically, the multiplication principle says here, if two operations, operation 1 and operation 2, are performed in order, and you have N1 possible outcomes for the first operation, and N2 possible outcomes for the second operation, then there are N1 times N2 possible combined outcomes for the first operation followed by the second operation. This can be extended to more than two operations. So if you have O1 through ON operations, and there's for O1 there's N1 possibilities, for O2 there's N2 possibilities, and then the last one there's NN possible outcomes, then there are N1 times N2 times N3 all the way out to NN possible combined outcomes. Now, a simple example of this are suppose you're getting ready for work and you see that you only have two shirts and three pants that are, are clean and you want to know how many different outfits, outfits you can put together. Well, operation one would be selecting the shirt and so for that there's two possible ways you could go with your shirt and then operation two would be selecting the pant and there's three possible ways to select the pant so that means that there's two times three total outfits that you could choose. Now you can extend this to we can instead of shirts and pants we can throw in um, four pair of socks, two belts, and five pair of shoes. And then um, operation one would be so it doesn't matter the order by the way, but I'm going to say one is selecting the shirt, operation two is selecting the pant, operation three would be selecting the sock. There's four pair of socks. We're going to assume that you're going to each sock is just going to be one set or each pair is one set. There's uh, two belts and there's five uh, sets of shoes. So you just say two times three times four times two times five and you get 240 outfits that are possible from that meager uh, bit of uh, clothing. Now, in the above problems, there was no repetition. So it, in other words, you're not going to choose uh, if you got a red shirt in a closet, you can't choose it to wear as a shirt and wear as pants. And so, so in some questions, we have rep repetition that's allowed. So let's say you were taking a five-question multiple choice quiz, and you were going to randomly select each answer. Let's suppose you wanted to know how many answer sheets could be turned in, how many different answer sheets could be turned in if each question has four responses. Well, could the answers be repeated this time? For example, could you answer A and then A again? Of course you could. So you could even uh, select A for all five answers if you wanted to. Well, this means that each question has four possible responses. So there's four ways to answer the first question. There's four ways to answer the second, four ways to answer the third, four ways to answer the fourth, four ways to answer the fifth. So there's four times four times four times four times four, or four to the fifth possible answer sheets that you could turn in. So that's 1,024 answer sheets. Now, if there were five responses on each question, then each question would have five possible answer sheets, or I mean five possible answers. So then that would be five times five times five times five times five, or five to the fifth, which is 3,125. So now you can see that these build dramatically as we add more questions. If this were 10 questions, the answers would be 4 to the 10th power or 5 to the 10th power, depending on which one we were looking at. So you can see your chances of guessing and making 100% would not be real good. On some of these, we can use a tree diagram, but a tree diagram is just a visual uh, representation. Um, let's go, let's just do one with the shirt and the pants example. So take a look over here and you'll see that my first operation, shirt one or shirt two. So I could choose, I could branch off by selecting shirt one or I could take the branch where I select shirt two. But if I take the branch where I select shirt one, then I could choose either pant one 
pant two, or pant three. So in other words, that's three choices. Shirt one with pant one, shirt one with pant two, shirt one with pant three. Or I could do the same thing with shirt two. Shirt two with pant one, shirt two with pant two, shirt two with pant three. So in that case, you can actually see the six possible uh, outfits. Now, um, on the earlier question regarding the multiple choice questions, the branches actually grow exponentially. So um, let's just do it for two questions so I can show you. If you had two questions, if you were only going to answer two questions, then you could choose either for the first question, you could choose A, B, C, or D. Now this is for four choices each. Now if you choose A, then that means you could choose A followed by A, A followed by B, A followed by C, or A followed by D. Same thing for B. You could choose B followed by A, B followed by B, B followed by C, or B followed by D, and so forth. Same thing for C, same thing for D. Well, if you add these up, you'll see that, you know, A, 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 B, A, C, A, D, B, A, B, 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 C, B, D, C, A, C, B, C, 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 D, D, A, D, B, D, C, D, D, then you get 16 possible answers. So if you had three questions, then you would actually have to bring off of each of these, you'd have to bring off four branches more on each of these, and you would get 64 paths. So, you know, the Venn diagram, I mean, the tree diagram is nice, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really work when you have a lot of, of possibilities. It just gets too bulky. So here are a few multiplication principle examples. The first one says, if a married couple is planning to have two children, how many possible outcomes are there? Uh, considering the order of births here. So, operation one, you can have a boy or a girl. Operation two, you can have a boy or a girl. So that would mean there's two times two, or four possible outcomes. Now, you could write them out, boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl, if you wanted to. Um, Having multiple children, tossing multiple coins, and answering multiple true-false questions follow a similar pattern. So, let's say, how many outcomes are there if three coins are tossed? Well, there's two possible ways each coin could land. So that would mean there's two times two times two A outcomes. How many outcomes are possible if five coins are tossed? Well, you just continue. Two times two times two times two times two. So there's 32 possible outcomes. How many possible outcomes if three true-false questions are answered? Well, there's two possible ways to answer each question. Since there's three questions, it would be 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And then for five true-false questions, it would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 32. Um, I'll let you read this interesting example about binary code, but I don't want to spend time going over that. So I'll kind of scroll through slowly and you can freeze the video when you want to. I just threw this in as an added bonus for you. Okay, now, number two here says you go to your closet and find you have two shirts, three pants, three decent pair of shoes, and four belts. Well, we did one like that earlier. You just say two times three times three times four and get 72. Now, um, number four says, how many possible 10-digit phone numbers under the following conditions? Okay, 10-digit phone numbers. Let's say each number can be 0 to 9, and there's no restrictions. Well, that means that if you wanted to, each number could be 0 if you wanted to. So, and we can repeat. So we could have 0, 0, 0 if we wanted to. So each digit has 10 possibilities, 0 to 9. Remember, that gives you 10 possibilities if you count 0. So there's 10 digits for each one, and since there's 10 digits, that gives me 10 to the 10th power, which is uh, 10, 10 billion. I think I left off a 0 there. Okay, now, if the first number cannot be a 0 or a 1, then all that does is limits the first number. So there's only 8 ways, 8 possibilities for the first number, but the other seven, there's 10 possibilities for each of those. And so that would be 8 times 10 to the ninth, or 8 billion. Now, there's really less than that because obviously there's other 
there, there's a sequence of numbers that you, you know, like you can't start out a number with 911, so you'd have to remove all those, or 411 and things like that. So, so you know, this is just the maximum possible that you could come up with. Let's consider a debit card that has a pin that consists of four digits. Uh, if there are no restrictions, then there's actually um, 10 ways you can choose each digit. So that would be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, or 10,000 options. If digits cannot be repeated, then there's 10 ways to choose the first number, but that only leaves 9 ways to choose the second, and then 8 ways to choose the third, and 7 ways to choose the fourth. So that's 5,040. Now, if adjacent digits must be um, different, then you have 10 choices for the first number, but since you can't use this number again, that leaves you nine choices here. But this third number you choose, it can't be the second number, but it can now be the first number. So the only number you can't use here is the second number, and so that still leaves you nine. And then the only number that this one can't be would be the third number, so that leaves you nine again. So... 10 times 9 times 9 times 9 is 7,290. Uh, you can read these coin problems. I've already touched on this, but if you toss uh, four coins, there's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 16 ways they can land. If you toss two six-sided die, there's 6 times 6 is 36. If you toss three six-sided die, there's 6 times 6 times 6, or 216 ways they can land. If you toss a four-sided, a five-sided, and a six-sided die, then you would have four times five times six, which is 120. If you're making license plates, and each plate has uh, six characters, then remember there's 36 characters, 10 uh, numbers, 0 to 9, and then 26 letters, A to Z. So there would be 36 ways to if there's if there's no restrictions there's 36 ways to fill each spot in your license plate so that would be 36 to the sixth power now if you if that wasn't enough then maybe you could throw in um, one character plates which there would be 36 of those then you could throw in two character plates there would be 36 times 36 of those three character plates 36 times 36 times 36 and so on so if you go all the way up to six character plates, then you would have to add the 36 one character plates to the 36 squared two character plates to the 36 cubed three character plates, and then your four character plates, your five character plates, and then your six character plates. And then just to add a little humor to it, there is one blank plate, which you could get that number by 36 to the zero. So interesting, huh? Okay. Uh, Wrapping this up, um, again, I've already answered the true-false questions and the multiple-choice questions, but what if you had three true-false questions and two multiple-choice questions? Well, then there would be two times two times two ways to answer the three true-false questions and then four times four ways to answer the two multiple-choice questions. So you'd multiply all that together and get 128. Um, here's a pizza problem where you have uh, four options for sauce, ten options for toppings, and three options for crust in two different sizes. Well, that's four for the sauce, ten for the toppings, three for the uh, crust, and then two sizes. So that's 240 different pizzas possible. And then here's one for three-letter code words from the first nine letters of the alphabet. If there are no restrictions, then it's just 9 times 9 times 9, because that allows you to have uh, words like AAA or BBB. And then if you can't have repetition, then it's 9 times 8 times 7, which is 504. And so that takes care of the multiplication principle. And next we're going to talk about uh, permutations and combinations. And we'll find that there's a close relationship between permutations and the multiplication principle.